Hey folks, welcome to another Passion for Sound audio review. And today we're taking a look at the Zen's Mangird Top, or you might know them as the Zen's Top IEM. And this was the first IEM in a series of reviews I'm going to be doing for Linsol as sponsors of the channel. And the reason it's coming first is that when I got sent a whole bunch of IEMs from Linsol, I decided to post over on the Passion for Sound community page here on YouTube and ask you to vote for which one you wanted to see first, and this was the one you asked for. And I say that for two reasons. Firstly, because I wanted to share the fact that I'm listening to you and I thank you for your input. But secondly, to say that the IEMs that have been sent out are at different price points and also at different quality levels. Some of them I've really enjoyed my first listen to, others not so much. And the reason that's important is that this one that you happen to have selected as the first one for me to review is also very positive. But I want to assure you that it doesn't mean they're all going to be positive. It doesn't mean that just because Lynn Sol is sponsoring this, I'm going to say good things about the IEMs they sent out. That was a very key specification for me when we made the sponsorship arrangement. And so I'm letting the cat out of the bag here, but even though this is going to be a largely positive review, don't for a second think that it's got anything to do with the sponsorship, because you'll see in the upcoming future reviews of some of the other IEMs, I'm not going to be so kind and gentle on those. In other words, the Zen's top have earned a positive review, it's not given to them just because of the sponsorship. And so with that said, let's kick off now and talk about the Zen's top. The tops retail for $530 US dollars, making them what I would call a mid-tier IEM. It's going to sound like an expensive IEM to some, but there are lots of IEMs that are well over the $1,000 mark, even up into the three, four, five thousand dollars $5,000 mark. So these aren't a crazy expensive IEM, but they're definitely one that you're going to want to think about before you drop that much cash on. What you're getting if you buy yourself a pair of these is an 8 balanced armature and single dynamic driver design, meaning that there's a dynamic driver and 8 balanced armatures per side of course. And as is generally the case with IEMs, they're very easy to drive. They've got a 25 ohm impedance, 107 decibel sensitivity, and therefore they'll run off absolutely anything. As is always the case, the quality of the power is more important than the amount of power, and these will reward you for better quality input, as we'll talk about shortly. Before we get there though, let's talk about what you get in the box along with the IEMs. And I'm going to start with this case that's here on my desk. These come in a really nice case, it's quite bulky, so for those of you that want something compact to go in a bag, these aren't going to be so good. But one of the reasons I like it is that when you open it up, it's got the separated sections to store the IEMs safely, so they're not going to bang together and risk breaking. Now it might be overkill, I don't think these are particularly fragile IEMs, but it's nice to know that if you've spent a significant amount of money on a pair of IEMs, that they've got to be protected in your bag. In addition to the case, we of course get a cable, and this is what I'd call an okay cable, it's nothing special, but it's perfectly serviceable. The tops use a two pin connector, so you can very easily swap in aftermarket cables if you want to. I haven't tested them with aftermarket cables, I didn't feel the need. And as is always the case, it comes down to preference so much with cables in terms of which way you want to tilt the sound quality, so I'm not going to try and get into that, but the good news is you can absolutely chuck on a different cable if you want to. But the extra good news is you probably don't need to. The cable here is quite serviceable, it's nice and lightweight, so it sits well, it's comfortable, it's not microphonic in my experience, and it's just a nice solid cable. Finally, the other key thing you get in the box is a set of tips, and you get a total of three options. You get two different sorts of silicon tips, there's some white ones and some black ones. They don't make a huge sonic difference, but there is a slight difference as I'll show you on screen here. And then you also get a set of foam tips. So you get a good range of tips, you can make sure that you find the right fit and the right comfort for you with the Zen's tops. And then the one other thing that you may or may not use, I never use these personally, but you also get a shirt clip. So you get a little clip that goes into your clothing somewhere, and you can then fasten the cable itself into that clip somewhere, should you want to. Oh, and there's also a little bag, a little velvet bag, and a key ring. Personally, I don't care for things like the key ring. For me, I would much rather they put the money into making the product a bit cheaper, or put it into making it a bit better somehow, but it's in there if you want it. 
before we get to talking about the sound quality, the one final thing I want to talk about is the design of the IEM itself. These are a beautiful looking IEM. Each faceplate has this kind of two-part approach where you've got this kind of glittery blue section at the top and then you've got a dark section. It's almost like opal. It's quite dark, but then with these little patches of fiery, reflective, aquary green sort of color, they look really lovely. The Manga logo is also written in there in a reflective silver and overall they're a lovely looking IEM. They're designed in a way that I often refer to as kind of a pseudo custom molding. So they've got what would be this kind of average shape for most people's ears in the acrylic molding. And then a stainless steel looking nozzle that's moderately wide. It's a decent length, but not too long and it's not too thick. For someone like me with relatively small ear canal openings, I do find these comfortable. That's really important. And so I think they're going to work for most people unless you've got really, really tiny ear canals. Trying to work out what gear you should buy next? Have a look at the Passion for Sound Recommends link down in the description below. Clicking on the link will take you through to my Patreon page and specifically a post where you can click on the Airtable image to go through to my recommended product database. Once you're in the database, you can use the filter button up the top to choose which sorts of product types you want to have a look at. Maybe headphones, maybe DACs, maybe amps. Choose the one or ones that you want to see from this list. And then you can also sort the list by price if you want to or other features as well. You'll then see a consolidated list just of the product types you want to have a look at, including things like what the retail price was when I last checked. You've got links to my reviews of each product and then also links to where you can go and buy them. Feel free to play around with the filters and sorting options as much as you like to find the gear you're looking for. And I hope that this database points you in just the right direction for you. So happy hunting, happy listening, and now let's get back to the review. And so from here, it all comes down to how they sound. And as I've already said, they do sound great. But what I've done for this review is I've returned to an old approach and I've kind of modified an old approach to my reviews and that is that I'm going to step through some characteristics of the sound of these using my curated playlist that I've shared with my patrons. And so some of the categories I'm about to give you are the categories of the playlists themselves to give you an idea of what patrons get access to. And then once I've finished painting a picture of how these sound on their own, I've got a comparison to come with the Fio FH9, which is a very similarly priced IEM, just to see how the tops stack up against another competitor and whether they're worth the money. Sometimes we get an IEM that sounds good, but you put it up against something else around the same price and you find that's even better. So I was curious to see that and we'll get to that shortly. But for now, let's dive into the sound quality of the tops just in isolation. Starting off with the overall tonality of these, and I'll describe them as generally quite neutral with just a slight tilt towards treble and clarity. They don't get harsh or sibilant, but there is a little tiny bit of emphasis in the top end. It's quite tastefully done, but I'd say they're not entirely natural to my ears. And that's not a bad thing. If it's done well, that can be a great thing because it draws your attention to new and different sounds. But for those looking for a rule of flat presentation that doesn't colour anything, these aren't quite there, but they are pretty close. That leads us nicely into talking about vocal qualities, and specifically the fact that the slightly treble tilted tuning of the tops, and it is very slight, what that means is that when you listen to vocals, it's going to emphasise just a little bit into the texture rather than the body of the vocal. So if you have a rich male vocal, you're going to hear a bit more texture and a bit less of that deep resonance. For a female vocal, you're going to hear a bit more of the breath and a bit less of the resonance. So they do have that slight tilt, but again, it's very tastefully done. What it also means is that you're getting a very present vocal. It's a vocal that's a, a little bit forward of the mix, but not too forward. It's not in your face, but it's very well focused. It's very kind of immediate and present, and I like that about the tops. Looking down low, the bass extension from these is excellent. I'm putting that down to the fact they're using a dynamic driver, which is giving them a really nice flat and extended bass response. There's a tiny bit of roll off at the very, very, very bottom end, but it's nothing that you're going to audibly notice. At the same time, the presence from that bass is solid. They're not a bass enhanced IEM in any way. There's not a lift in the bass. But because of that extension and the linearity of the bass, meaning that it doesn't have any peaks and troughs, you get a really good sense of bass presence and punch from these. But there's no enhancement. I wouldn't say they're a bass head IEM. They're not super punchy or super slammy IEMs, but I do think they're quite natural. And so it depends on what you want here. If you're looking for a generally flat and neutral IEM, which is a bit of extra clarity and texture, then these could be great. But if you're looking for a punchy, thumpy, slightly enhanced bass IEM, these aren't going to be such a great choice. So it does depend on what you're looking for. I personally think they're a beautiful tuning. I do like a bit of extra bass, but I don't feel like these are lacking at all. In terms of resolution and texture, that's an area that these are really strong. That slight bit of treble emphasis brings out some extra textures and details and resolution that you might not hear from other IEMs. 
And so in that regard, they're very enjoyable. And I feel like they actually perform slightly above their price point for resolution and micro details. You'll hear things through these that you might not hear elsewhere. One of my specific playlist categories is tracks that will look at things like the quality of transients and sibilance. And so splitting that up for a moment, because they are a bit different, if we look at just the sibilance for a moment, the tops can very occasionally show you that a track is a bit spicy, a bit too hot in the recording, and therefore they can not exactly get sibilant, but they can show you that the track is being recorded with quite a hot treble. And I kind of like that about them in some ways because they're telling you exactly what's going on. They're not sugarcoating or smoothing over treble that's too hot in the recording. But at the same time, they managed to do it in a way that wasn't too harsh for me. It does mean that if you're listening to poor recordings or recordings that do have extra hot treble, they aren't going to be a particularly pleasing IEM in that regard. But it's not a trait of the actual IEM so much as what they're showing you about the recording. And so keep that in mind. If you're looking for a really relaxed listen that's never going to bite you, the tops probably aren't the best choice. But if you're looking for something that is quite honest, quite neutral, quite resolving, the tops are wonderful connected to that but a little bit different is how the tops handle transients. So we're talking here about things like guitar strums, the moment that a drumstick hits a cymbal, any of the leading edges or the starting moments of notes. And the tops do a great job with those as well. You can almost feel the articulation, you can feel the energy of a guitar strum, the start of a, a hit of a snare or a cymbal. They've got a really nice sense of attack, again without getting aggressive. It's very tastefully balanced so that it's got the energy, it's got the attack, but it's not harsh, it's not aggressive. They're just overall a beautiful and enjoyable IEM. Finally, we come around to soundstage and imaging. Two separate things, but clearly related. And the soundstage from the tops is quite good. It's got a really nice sense of width to the sound. They don't go particularly deep, but you do get a little bit of that sphericality, which is not really a word, I don't think. But you get a sense of the fact that there is both a left-right sense of the soundstage, but also a level of it wrapping around in front of you. So it's nice and natural. As I said, it's not huge. It's not really deep, but they are strong in that regard. Within that soundstage, the imaging or the placement of each individual sound is fantastic. They're really strong in that regard. It's a very enjoyable IEM in terms of being able to hear where everything comes from. And that speaks to coherency. What that means is they've been tuned and set up in such a way where each of the eight balanced armatures and the dynamic driver in each side are working beautifully in harmony. Sometimes when we get these multi-driver designs, what you find is that you get sounds that are kind of split out in unusual ways. And it can be interesting at first, but in time, I generally find it distracting. And I never once, as I listened to a whole lot of stuff through the tops, I never once felt like they were distracting. They were just coherent and detailed with a lovely sense of image focus. And so that kind of closes out the technical overview of the tops, but it leaves me with two more playlists that are more of a general nature. One of them I call the Ability to Rock playlist, and that's just, is it an IEM or a headphone that when you put music through it, it's able to give you the feeling that you want to bob your head, tap your toes, etc.? What I've found with the tops is that because they've got that base extension, they are able to kind of give you a bit of a sense of the groove of the track. But I did find that on a splashier track, so a track that kind of rocks, it's often going to have some extra treble sound from the cymbals and snares and things like that. And the slightly tilted tuning towards the treble meant that occasionally on slightly splashier tracks, the treble could kind of dominate the bass a little bit. So it did detract just a tiny bit from the top's ability to groove, but it wasn't too bad. It was just a minor thing and it will depend on the track. And so I'd say that the tops are an IEM that's not bad for those that want to rock out, but it's also not going to be my top choice for that. Finally, I've also got a dedicated classical playlist, and that's because some IEMs and headphones lend themselves really well to classical, but maybe not so much other genres, or vice versa. With classical music, the tops do sound great. They've got a nice sense of attack on the strings without overdoing it. The soundstage having a good sense of width and a little bit of depth means that the orchestra doesn't sound too congested. It doesn't give you the best sense of the layering of the orchestra, but it does give you the sense that the instruments aren't sitting all on top of one another, and that's probably the most important thing to me, is that it doesn't feel like one blob of sound. And that's largely because the imaging is so good, it's able to separate out the sections of the orchestra, the general tonality and the timbre of different sounds. You're able to hear where each individual instrument is, even though the overall sense of space isn't massive, particularly in the kind of depth plane, that sort of front to back plane. The tonality of all instruments comes across really well, whether it's a violin, a cello, a piano, the woodwind section, all of them come across with a really nice and natural sense of tonality. As I said, there's a little bit of extra attack on things like strings, but it's not overdone to the point where it dominates the tonality of the instruments. 
And so overall, I'd say if you are a fan of classical music, I think the tops could be a really good choice for you. I'm not a huge classical buff myself. I listen to bits and pieces of it. And I also haven't done a lot of comparisons deliberately with classical music between IEMs. But based on those that I've tried, this would be one that if I was thinking about classical music and I was playing in roughly this ballpark of budget, this is one I would definitely consider choosing. But on that note, if we're talking about comparisons and what we'd consider choosing, let's move now into the comparison that I did for this review, and that's with the FIO FH9. The FH9s, which I've got over here, these are an IEM that I reviewed some time ago. I really, really like them. They come with a few different nozzles, so you can actually tune them. There's a treble, a balance, and a bass nozzle. I happen to like the bass nozzle the most on these. They also have a lovely cable that's both, in my opinion, a nicer looking and feeling cable than the tops, and also has a modular connector, so you can remove the jack at the end and change from a 3.5 to a 2.5 or a 4.4 mil connector. So when you're paying a little bit more for the Fios, some of what you're getting is the accessories and the ergonomics of them, but of course none of that matters if they don't sound better. And so I was interested to see how these compared. They were the closest in the mix. The other earphones that I thought about comparing and I chose not to was the Sennheiser IE600s because they're that much more expensive again. And so the Fio FH9 was a good comparison for those that might be working on a budget of under say 600 US dollars. One of the tracks I used for this comparison was Quando Canta El Corazon. This is by Ira Kerry. And it's a great live recording of a jazz band. It's a Cuban jazz band. And starting off with the FH9, everything sounded smooth, but not overly kind of lacking in detail, just smooth and lush and rich in a good way. They really allow the lead saxophone to shine in this track and be front and center. The staging is fairly modest. It's not particularly wide or particularly deep. And as I listened more, because this track takes a while to build, I found that the FIO FH9 was doing a lovely job, but it also wasn't exciting as I listened to it. And so I jumped over to the tops to see what I'd hear there. Immediately the tops have a bit more brightness in the piano, a bit more texture in the sax, and I found myself immediately more engaged. In fact, I described the sound I heard from the tops as just being more alive than it was from the Fio FH9. The FH9 just dulled things a tiny bit too much. They're not a dull sounding IEM as such, but they do have a slightly laid back, slightly smoother feel to them, and that sometimes can rob the music of some energy when you compare it to something like the tops here focusing on the saxophone for a moment, and it feels more real from the tops. You've got that extra sense of texture, which is an area they're so good. You can hear the breath coming through the saxophone, and you can also better hear things like the articulation of the player's fingers on the keys. So it just brings the whole thing a bit more to life. It brings a bit more realism to the recording. When the percussion kicks in, there's a bit more energy from it in the tops, and energy in a good way, not aggressive energy, but it just has a bit more, again, a bit more life, a bit more spark to it. And so after listening to this track and a whole lot of others as well, for me it's a bit of a no contest. I liked the Fio FH9 when I reviewed it, but for me, unless you need the modular cable and the nozzles for tuning it, I don't see any reason to spend extra on the Fio FH9, just get yourself a pair of Zen's top. I think at $530 US dollars, they're a wonderful sounding IEM, they're going to be one of the reference points in my collection from now on, because I do think they're an absolutely fantastic choice. And on that note, if you've watched all the way to the end of this video, firstly, thank you. But secondly, if you'd be interested in winning a pair of tops for yourself, I'm using this as a bit of a test. Let me know in the comments down below that you got this far. And also, jump over to Linsoul's website, have a look on there, there's links in the description. Jump through Linsoul's website and let me know a product over there that you would like me to review and I'll ask them if it's possible. And what I'll be doing based on those responses is that one of you that responds to say that you got this far and a product that you would like to see me review from the Linsoul website, one of you will actually win yourself a pair of the Zen's top. So it's a chance to get yourself a 530 US dollar IEM just simply by checking out their website and leaving a comment down below to let me know that you got this far and you've checked it out and you want to see me review product X, whatever product X is. So make sure you do that. Thanks for getting this far. Good luck in the giveaway. And as always, I hope you found this video useful, helpful, or interesting. If you did and you haven't done this already, please hit the like button, consider subscribing, and ring the notification bell. But for now, let me leave it to the music, so happy listening, and I'll see you here next time on Passion for Sound. Mm -hmm.